Hello everyone, my name is Tadej Blažić, I'm a freelance 3D designer and today we continue with part 3 of our quick MoGraph series. Last time we finished modeling our scene, so if you haven't, do check our previous part. In this lesson I'll show you how to use and set up keyframes for both simple and more complex tricks that create the illusion of seamless looping movement. We'll also go through setting up rotation for your object, how to solve some common issues, and we'll do some visibility keyframing, which is very useful when you want your objects to appear and disappear in your animations. Also, I'm using Blender 2.79 shortcuts, but I'll be overlaying 2.8 shortcuts whenever that's relevant. So let's get into it. Okay, so this is where we left off last time. Now, one thing that we have to do before we start keyframing is to put a object constraint on the propeller. Now, I'm going to select my propeller object over here, and I'm going to go to the object constraint properties tab over here. I'm going to add a object constraint child off, and I'm going to click on the eyedropper icon, and I'm going to click on my body. So my main body. I'm just going to click set inverse so the object returns to its actual body and now if I move my plane you can see that everything is moving with the main body. I'm going to go into front view, I'm going to close the window so I have one huge window here and I'm going to move my plane back to the actual enclosure above the pedestal like so. I'm going to scale it down move it slightly so I can make it fit into the actual enclosure. Maybe I'm going to scale it down slightly again. So here it is. Now if I open my enclosure I can see if it fits inside. How is it doing? Yeah, perfect. Okay, I'm going to close my enclosure now. Now I have to animate the plane. We'll first start with the plane animation. So I'm going to go to front view and now I'm going to start keyframing. I'm just going to click on this icon auto key I'm going to click or rather select my main body and now I'm going to press G and left click. That means that I've set the first keyframe to be in my plane. Now, when you start keyframing and when you start to think about uh, infinite loops, a good thing to do is to map out what you're going to do. In this case, we want to map out how long the animation is going to be. I don't want the loop to be extremely long, so I'm going to set the end position of the frames not to 250, but rather 120. This will also help us plan out our animation. Now, I want to have a type of undulating movement for my plane. I'm going to press G and drop the plane down, very close to the actual grass like so. I want to choose the middle position, so the 60th frame, and I want to move it up, like so. And now I want to jump to the last frame. Now, I could press G and then try to match the initial position, but another thing you can do is click on this icon, so jump to endpoint, to the first endpoint. You can select just the first frame, while you're hovering over your timeline, press Ctrl C to copy the keyframe. And then you can return to the end position to frame 120, press Ctrl V and paste the final position. Now, if we move back, we can see that the first and last position are where they should be. So these are going to loop perfectly. If I press Alt A for play, I can see that my animation looks something like this. So it's just going up and down, up and down. Now, I want it to have just a bit of motion, a bit of visual interest. So I'm just going to jump to frame, let's say, 30. And I'm going to rotate it on the y-axis by 35 degrees. Now, I'm going to return to the first position, replay. And you can see that it's actually moving up as it would be trying to reach higher. Now, I'm going to jump to frame 10. And I'm going to just drop the plane on the z-axis slightly. So when I press play, it has like a slighter bump, sort of like when planes try to elevate, it's going to have that slight bump when it's trying to go up, like so. For the returning position, I'm just going to move to frame 90. I'm going to rotate it on the y-axis again, let's say by 35 degrees. Let's see how that looks. I'm just playing. 
mid position and then it's slowly going down returning again so i'm going to jump to frame 110 and i'm just going to add a slight dip on the z-axis let's see how that looks so it's going up going down yeah so it's again simulating that undulating type of motion perfect i want to return to my initial position and i want to animate the propeller the propeller is going to be just a bit tricky because sometimes if you try to animate rotating objects on other animated objects you can have a lot of trouble but since we use a object constraint and we've done everything correctly up until this point we shouldn't have any trouble i'm going to select my propeller and i'm going to press r and left click this is going to set my first rotation frame the orientation is going to be local so i'm going to choose local and i'm going to press n so I can see what's happening in my item transform view. Now, I want it to transform or rather rotate on the x-axis. Now let's try and pull the x-axis. Yes, so it's rotating on the x-axis. I want to jump to the final frame. So the amount that I have to set now, it has to be a full revolution. So 360 degrees. In any case, I'm just going to go, let's say 36,000 because with 36,000, I get a interesting a like very choppy type of look. Now let's try our animation and you can see it's working perfectly. However, we have a slight issue. Now, if you notice the position is perfect. So it starts and ends in the last position. However, when we play it, the behavior of our propeller is a bit strange. It's not just continuously rotating. That's something that usually happens when you try to keyframe your work in this manner, but it's easily solvable. I'm going to divide the screen and I'm going to choose the editor type to be the graph editor. In this graph editor, I'm going to select my propeller and I'm going to click normalize so I can see where my curves are. These are the curves that are telling my propeller how to turn. So they are transforming just on the X axis. Now what I need to do to make this movement fluid is I just have to select both of these. I'm just pressing A so I can select all of them and I'm pressing T and then choosing linear. What this does is just takes out the Bezier curve and creates a continuous motion like so. And we have that choppy look. Perfect. Right now, I want to repeat the same step with my body. So I'm looking for the blue line, which means it's the Z-axis. I'm choosing the first and the last frame. So I'm selecting those. And then I'm pressing T, linear. And now they should follow a perfect loop. I can also test it by going to frame 110. And I can see that the loop is seamless. Perfect. Now that we have solved our loop problem, I'm just going to close this window down. I'm just pressing N to hide that menu. And the next thing we have to do is the clouds. If we want a seamless loop animation, we have to position these objects with a mid starting position, meaning that they already start chopped. I'm going to move this cloud on the X axis and I'm going to move it out. So this is going to be the starting position for this cloud. Remember, we also keep the auto keying set on. Now I'm going to just grab the timeline and I'm going to move it to about, let's say, frame 40. And I'm going to move this cloud to about here on the X axis. So the thing I want to achieve is I want the cloud to go underneath the plane without any collision. So we can see that it's barely touching. So we can also slow down the movement of the cloud. And this, we can do it by just, again, jumping to frame 40. And we can either grab the frame and drag it to frame 60, like so. Now, when we scroll the animation, we can see that our cloud doesn't clip with the plane at all. I'm just going to jump to frame 120, and I'm going to move this cloud to be out of sight, like so. Now, if I play it, you can see that the cloud stops for a while and then moves out of the scene. This is exactly what we wanted. Now, these two guys over here are a different story. So I want these clowns to already start in the frame because they are going to add the illusion of the seamless loop. So I'm going to front view, pressing G and moving the cloud somewhere where it already starts clipping. 
Now what I want to do is I want to scroll the timeline and see where the top position of the plane is. So that's where I want my clouds to disappear. So I can make it a bit slower. Now I'm moving to frame 140, let's say, and I'm just moving it out of sight slightly like so. Let's see how that does. Perfect. So it's barely skimming the plane's wing. And I also wanted to move out of frame. So 70. However, now if we play the animation, we see that the cloud returns back. Now, this is something that we don't want to happen. How do we solve this problem? Well, we are going to keyframe the visibility of this object. We have to take into account that the object has to return to frame 120. So basically, at 100, this object has to start outside of the frame. Now, if we check our animation, we can see that the cloud disappears, reappears, disappears again and reappears again. However, the speed is not correct, so we have to correct that. I'm going to jump to frame 100 and I'm going to pull it, let's say, to 85. Now, I want to match the speed of the coming cloud with the one in the first part. So we see that it's coming in, stops slightly and then moves forward. So I'm just correcting the position on X so I can find the sweet spot. And I'm also going to use the graph editor to put in linear movement. I will choose the last two keyframes and I'll choose the first one too. Press T and then choose linear. Now let's see if we've matched the movement. Nice, so there is again a bit of lag, but the speed seems to be okay. Now that the speed is matched, we have to solve this disappearing and reappearing problem. I'm going to jump to frame 69. I'm going to click on the animate property in my object properties tab. So I can put a keyframe there and I'm going to leave it ticked. Now I'm going to jump one frame ahead I'm going to deselect the show in renders and this is going to keyframe the visibility of the object in the final render. Now if I move forward, let's find another keyframe. So let's say 85. I'm going to keyframe so it's again invisible. Jump one frame, show in renders. And it's going to keyframe it automatically. If we were to render this, the cloud would reappear and disappear. Now I'm going to repeat this process for the other cloud and I'm just going to fast forward through this process. This is it for the animation of our plane and of our clouds. Next time we are taking a look at materials, principled materials, PBR materials and lighting. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.